Hello, this is Dr. Scott Catino, and I'm providing this video lecture today on Joseph Coney and the Lord's Resistance Army, and I'm providing this for Henley Putnam University students. I think you're going to find this video lecture to be very interesting. Joseph Coney and the Lord's Resistance Army have gained a lot of attention. This is the kind of organization that frequently appears in the news when a particular event takes place, a mass atrocity, or if some human rights group calls attention to its characteristics and particularly um, the unique individual himself, Joseph Coney. But it's far more than that, far more than an organization that grabs news attention. Its characteristics are very different from other insurgent groups. And I think as we get through this presentation, we'll see that that's certainly true and that there's a degree of relevancy here that may not easily be understood. The objective of this presentation is to discuss the unique capabilities of the Lord's Resistance Army. It truly is an organization, an insurgent group, that is unique in how it achieves its ends. Secondly, to examine the environment and the human domain exploited by Joseph Coney and the LRA. If we look at this widely, we look at the environment and how he's able to manipulate it, how he's able to exploit it, we're going to find these unique capabilities and look closer at the environment and the characteristics of it, the two being very important, the exploitation of it as well as what's being used to exploit. And third, looking more locally and um, looking more particularly at the culture exploited by the LRA, I think we're going to gain some insights into this group and how it operates. The first thing that we find about this group is that it has developed expansive intelligent networks and that may not be readily apparent. It's not the largest group by any stretch of the imagination and it's difficult to find accurate data or statistics on how large this group actually is. Uh, the numbers vary from the thousands to the hundreds and certainly uh, the LRA exploits this in the media by trying to exaggerate its, its actual numbers, but it does move around sometimes in very small units or much smaller units, I should say, in order to remain elusive. But the fact remains that the LRA has been able to utilize, to create and utilize expansive and vibrant intelligent networks, allowing forewarning and knowledge of opponent posture and weak points and particularly movements. It's been very skilled at doing that. And I think a fact that calls this to attention is we look at the major military operations that were conducted by local, regional, and even international forces being involved and in how uh, with the objective of to capture or kill Coney and yet that has not taken place. These operations have failed. We can look through a list here and look in for all the way dating back from 1991, Operation North conducted by Ugandan forces, Operation Iron Fist, Operation Lightning Thunder in 2008. And we're looking at, again, we're looking at Ugandan forces. We're also looking at regional forces of all working together here over time. We see this in 2010 to the present, even joint international forces being used. And yet, Kony remains alive. And his LRA, although reduced in number, still remains active. He has an extraordinary ability to survive. And that's a key capability of any dangerous insurgent group, their ability to survive. We know statistically that most of these groups do not survive very long, but the ones that make international news and are obviously a major threat have this skill of survival. Kony has thus far successfully eluded the joint operations of Uganda, the CAR, the Congo, uh, South Sudan, in addition to the African, Un African Union, the UN, and U.S. Special Forces all contributing to various degrees in the apprehension of the LRA leader. In addition to being able to develop an expansive and vibrant intelligence network that has an ability to understand the environment, Coney has done a remarkable job at creating a loyal inner circle and force protection. This is really important to understand and, and not Many groups are able to achieve this, and well, let me just back up a second here. This capability is one that I term nesting. Various groups as they begin, various terrorist groups or insurgent groups, try to develop 
a capability of nesting whereby the leaders and key support groups, the, certainly the senior leadership, have an inner circle, a tight inner circle that can create a very comfortable and very safe environment to survive and to operate. And that's not easily done. If we look at any of the major groups, whether it's Al Qaeda or even looking at the Vietnamese communists or whatever group you take, you'll often find that in its early stages, this ability to nest, to keep an inner circle close together and safe is not easily done. And sometimes it involves security forces coming in and killing a major aspect of it, or you'll find that even these groups will turn on each other. But what Coney has done so well is he's created this inner circle using this, this nesting capability to create an inner circle around him that provides force protection. You know, the case in point that I call attention to here was Coney was nearly captured in the Central African Republic in 2011 while he was taking a bath. Uh, Ugandan forces failed to detain him due to the fact of the loyalty of his guards who fired warning shots as these forces approached. This isn't an isolated case. Certainly, he's done this repeatedly, maybe not to this degree where it, it came down to this close proximity. But the fact is, he's able to move, he's able to remain so elusive because of this inner circle and this intelligent network that he, had, that he has. I don't want to overstate this. There's one case in particular where a senior leader has defected and provided a lot of intelligence to Ugandan forces on uh, the LRA. So that's not to say he does this perfectly, but it's certainly a capability that he has. Third, the ability of the LRA to exploit the political and geographical terrain is extraordinary. The ability to create space for survival and movement is something that very, very capable insurgent groups are able to do. And, and Coney does this extraordinarily well. He has an, uncanny, excuse me, an uncanny ability to exploit physical terrain, these dense forested areas, the triple canopy areas that are uh, so difficult to penetrate with our uh, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, our ISR capabilities, um, either, in, either in space or even uh, more locally or, or regionally conducted by air. He's simply able to use this very well, but he doesn't just stop there. And it's not just any one, part, one particular of these characteristics. It's that he combines them so well to create a synergistic effect, particularly his understanding of the international boundaries, the lack of government forces in these areas, the corrupt groups that do operate in the corrupt and illegal trade that goes on the, in these areas, the local cultures, the conflicts that take place along the boundaries, the isolated and um, hostile groups that may dwell in these areas. His understanding of this type of terrain is, is something that's very evident and his ability to not only understand it, but to exploit it and to do so with a, a time factor makes him all the more difficult to apprehend. And then adding that to that, the next variable of understanding the seams and regional security cooperation make this individual a very, very difficult person to apprehend. And the fact that he's done this, not just as a general characteristic, but when being pre pressed by security forces, when being chased by an opposing military force, or even cases where he was nearly surrounded, he was able to maneuver out of this to exfiltrate, to find these gaps, really is a unique characteristic of the LRA and says much to his ability to understand the local terrain as well as his, his force protection and, and his intelligence networks. It truly is an extraordinary characteristics, characteristic of this, this organization. The fourth characteristic I'd like to call attention to is his ability to utilize local culture, religion, and social norms. You know, the studies that look at Coney are very quick to call attention to this bizarre syncretistic religion that he has, which blended animism, animism, Pentecostalism, and the Ten Commandments. People look at this individual and a man who claims to have visions and dreams and have spirits speaking through him. You know, it's easy for the analyst, the observer, the expert in the security studies to look at an individual like this, <coughs> excuse me, 
and overstate how bizarre this individual is or falsely conclude that an individual with this type of aberrant religious mindset is detached to ground realities. This is simply not the case. You know, whether Coney believes that spirits speak through him or not is very irrelevant. The more relevant fact is that he's able to use religion for its social networks and he's able to exploit religion while keeping a very keen understanding of the local terrain and the tactics necessary to navigate through it. He has used this religious his religion to communicate effectively, to gain respect and deference of locals and local leadership and cement relationships as well as facilitate word of mouth transmission and to co opt loyalties for his tactical and strategic ends. And this is something that's very dangerous in these types of individuals. We do not find an aberrant religion causing a disconnect with ground realities. We find that even though this religion is an odd blending of various elements, it does not detract from his capabilities. In fact, he uses it to enhance them. And it should be understood in that light, and it should be understood in his detail on how he uses it. As we step back, we see truly that this fourth point is indeed relevant. His ability to utilize local culture, religion, and social norms is very evident and a part of his capabilities. Five, the exploitation of the divisions and animosities of regional states. This is certainly something that Coney does particularly well and is something that his organization does well. You know, and I bring out here a very clear point that is certainly simple to understand. The complexity comes in on how Joseph Coney is able to utilize this. The inter, meaning between states and intra within states and regions, these rivalries are very, very sharp, including Uganda, the Central African Republic, uh, Sudan, North and South, and Congo. There are not slight. There are very, very deep, sharp, bitter feuds, animosities, problems that take place between states and within these states. And Kony is comfortable with tactical and short-term short alliances with these groups, with these players, with these individuals. The rapid changes that occur in alliances and sudden changes in partnerships, as well as the intense operational tempo of opponents. This highly complex, highly volatile, highly a treacherous type of environment where there are constant changes where information can be traded quickly to opposing sides is something that he not only is able to survive in but actually thrive in. Really in spite of this context he's still able to exploit the seams in opponent forces regionally and locally. This is something that US forces, coalition forces found so difficult in Iraq and Afghanistan. You know, and a, a common statement was made that when U.S. or coalition forces dealt with locals that we had to keep in mind that loyalties are, are in essence rented. They're never really earned or cemented. And that's not to say that every person or oftentimes that those relationships were simply um, based on a, a treacherous or corrupt relationship. That's, that's not the case. But it was based on the fact that these relationships were often determined by the security environment. Um, a lack of communication and understanding culture, creating a, vo uh, a volatility. Certainly the fact that in Iraq and Afghanistan, our own partners sometime at the local level were unsure of our own intentions and were, were weighing our level of commitment. And certainly corruption was a major part of it. That created an instability. You know, U.S. forces undoubtedly had to learn to survive in this type of environment to understand it. There was certainly a period of ad adjustment, uh, a period of getting over the shock of this and finding out how to best deal with this. But this is the very type, uh, I would say even more volatile, that Coney is able to exist in and thrive in and use it to his advantage. In the past, he has used successfully short and longer term relationships with rebel groups. I use it as an example here, the Army for the Liberation of Rwanda, regions hostile to Uganda and areas where ungoverned space and resource exploitation allowed sanctuary. He's able to move in these areas that today will work with him and tomorrow will oppose him. And he's been able to survive in this type of environment. It really is a unique capability that he has and one that should be understood on its own merit. The exploitation of mass population removals is another characteristic of the LRA and certainly one that it uses as a capability. And please allow me to explain that. 
Here's the unique quality of Coney in the LRA. Given the relatively small size of Coney's LRA, and statistics, as I mentioned, vary on this, and no doubt Coney would like to exaggerate the presence of his numbers, whether it's in the thousands or the hundreds, he would like to exaggerate that. Um, but the fact of the matter is it's not so much his number, but it's the relative small size of that number, which is really astonishing in comparison to the amount of people that have been dislocated, forced to move out of entire areas and towns and, and, and regions. 400,000 people overall have been dislocated by the LRA. And it really is an astonishing fact. One would think that to dislocate and uproot and create mass misery for that many people, it would take a much larger force, but that simply isn't the case. The LRA is able to, to do that and has done that with its relatively small force. That's the fact of what he did, but how he uses that to his own benefit is a story of itself. What I like to call this is simply orchestrated catastrophe. Coney and the LRA dislocate entire villages or main elements of large villages while creating mass misery, mass population movements, and resource disasters. That's certainly the outcome, but again, how he uses it to his advantage is a, a unique capability. The LRA exploits these conditions in order to disrupt opponent intelligent networks. It's so critical in counterterrorism and in counterinsurgency to have good intelligence, quality, timely, accurate, relevant, useful intelligence. And often that takes local intelligence, local assets in place. Very difficult to set these up when entire villages and entire areas are uprooted and people are for forced to move. It, in essence, not only takes out that entire village area and its infrastructure, but also the intelligence networks that are created against him. The recruitment of children for soldiers and manpower, a horrible practice, of obviously a violation of international law and human rights, yet serves Coney's need for a continual influx of manpower. But also, during these periods of upheaval, he's enslaving women and children for sale in the sex trade as a part of human trafficking. Again, a major human rights violation, but one that is bringing a ready st a relatively steady flow of financing into his organization. And lastly, he uses this orchestrated catastrophe, these mass upheavals of, of populations, as a way to screen his movements and screen his military operations. Keep in mind that these are not only human uh, rights disasters that are taking place, and they're certainly that, but it also creates a political upheaval and embarrassment for local and national authorities where Coney is operating and causes resources to be allocated to that area, therefore thinning both the manpower and finances and forces that are available for counterterrorism measures while providing those screening movements for Coney's military operations. So he sees in this a military science and military art and uses it in that manner and it truly is a, a unique characteristic as well as a capability of the LRA. So in summary then when we look at this organization it truly stands out from so many of the groups that can be rather neatly fitted into religious extremist groups or let's say jihadists or groups that have a an identity based around nationalism. You know, let's say we would look at the Irish Republican Army in its day or groups that are used to expel outsiders we, or that have a particular political objective, one of reforming or bringing down a government. The, the LRA doesn't fit neatly into those groups because its character and capabilities are so unique and adding another C to that would be the context. The character, capability, and context are so unique and the way the LRA exploits them. It really possesses a unique mixture of capabilities that pose not only a major threat to the region of South Central Africa, but also to U.S. interests in the area, including access to strategic resources and creating regional stability to deny international terrorists a safe haven. It's going to be very hard for the United States to foster security in this area and deny large global groups like Al-Qaeda presence when there's a difficulty even containing an individual like this, like the LRA and his organization. So in short, uh, Coney and the LRA have some of the standard capabilities that make many insurgent groups succeed at their nefarious aims. Now we, 
certainly don't see these capabilities only being in the LRA. Effective organization, elusiveness, domination of the human domain, ex exploitation of regional resources and interstate borders. There are successful terrorist and insurgent groups that certainly have these qualities, but he also, Joseph Coney and the LRA, possess unique capabilities. This ability to exploit mass population removals and an extraordinary intelligence network allowing him to exfiltrate in the face of superior uh, forces and opposing armies and a dense presence of opposing armies. This is quite unique. Certainly his elusiveness is something that grabs international attention and its capability can be traced back to this. So I think this group should be looked at for that key word I've used throughout this presentation, uniqueness. And it's my hope that this presentation this video lecture has not necessarily given conclusive answers, but has stoked some debate and some understanding on this unique organization and certainly on its capabilities. If we can look at the group for that and look beyond that and see how it exploits its environment, I think we get a lot out of this and we certainly are able to raise our level of study. I provided a bibliography here. For those of you who want to look into this organization more deeply, there's certainly plenty of sources to, to analyze and study this organization, the LRA, and Joseph Coney in particular. I've provided my contact information here, and please feel free to contact me regarding this topic. I'd be happy to answer your questions. But more importantly, for students at Henley Putnam University, your professors may be using this particular video lecture. I would encourage you to deepen your studies and to reach out to your professor and um, ask any questions. Because again, I provided this video lecture primarily to kindle more study and interest in this subject and to deepen our studies here at Henley Putnam University. Thank you very much for, for listening and viewing this presentation. Have a great week.